So you currently own a home and you're looking to make a move, but you don't know whether you should buy first or sell first. This is one of the most common questions I get from current homeowners, so don't worry, you're not alone. And the answer? Well, it depends. There's a lot of things you need to consider. Typically, in a market trending upwards, you're gonna wanna buy first before you sell. The reason being is that theoretically, you're gonna be able to purchase at a lower price than you would at a future date, and you're gonna be able to sell your property at a higher price at a future date. And in a downtrending market, it would be the opposite. You'd wanna sell your property first so you can ensure you get the highest sale price and then buy at a future date so you can ensure you get a lower purchase price. And not only that, you'll also be able to know exactly what your budget is. Now, of course, everyone's situation is different, everyone has different risk tolerance, and things don't always work out perfectly. But in theory, typically these are the two ways that make the most sense. However, what if I told you there was a third way that you could do both simultaneously, all while minimizing the risk? Well, if that's something you wanna hear a little bit more about, then stay tuned, cause it's coming at you right after this. If this is your first time on my channel, I make weekly real estate videos based on the BC real estate market, as well as showcase community tours across the lower mainland. So if that's something you're interested in seeing more of, I suggest you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you're notified whenever I come out with a new video. And before I get into it, all I ask is that you do one thing for me and that's to hit that thumbs up button so the algorithm will push this video out to more individuals just like yourself who want to learn more about real estate. So you're looking to sell your home but you don't exactly know how you want to approach this because buying and selling at the same time is a tricky affair. In most cases, you're gonna need the proceeds of the sale of your previous home in order to close on the next one. Not only this, but you're also gonna to have to try to align the dates between both sales if you don't wanna to have to move multiple times or take on expensive financing such as a bridge loan. That is, unless you have a ton of cash sitting around, little or no mortgage, or an extremely high level of income. Additionally, you're obviously gonna to wanna to try and get the most money possible with the sale of your home while also simultaneously purchasing at the lowest price. And this isn't always easy when you're restricted by tight timelines. So first of all, you need to consider both options. Should you buy first or sell first? If you buy first, you don't have to wait until your home's sold. If that perfect property comes onto the market, you can act right away. You also have the ability to be more flexible with your timelines because you haven't sold your property yet. However, the downside here is you don't know exactly what your property is gonna sell for or if it's gonna sell at all. And this means you're probably gonna have to be more conservative with your budget in regards to your next purchase. On the other side of the coin, if you're gonna sell first, the good news here is that you know exactly what your budget is. However, on the downside, you're gonna have to try to line up the exact dates for when you're selling your home. Additionally, if that dream property does come onto the market, you're not gonna be able to act until your home has been sold. But if you remember at the beginning of the video, I told you that there's a third option that you can do both simultaneously, where you can tie up that dream property without having to actually sell your home first. So this is something we call a subject to sale. So essentially, this is a subject that allows you to purchase that new home subject to your current home selling by a certain date. The simplest reason for doing this is to line up the sales of both properties for financing and moving day reason. It gives you and your family a chance to move out of your old house and into the new house without any hassles, rental places, or otherwise. And I know we're supposed to act like real estate transactions are always simple and hassle-free, but that's just not the case. The reality is, as much as we try to minimize these challenges, there's some that are just inherent to the process. So as previously mentioned, one of these challenges is deciding whether to buy or sell first, because either way, you're gonna be in a state of limbo at some point in time. You've either sold and haven't purchased your property yet, or you've got an accepted offer and haven't sold your home yet. Both options can be stressful in their own ways, and unfortunately, you kind of have to pick your poison. So given that information, is it better to buy or sell first? Most of the time, I'd advise that you sell first before you buy, and especially in a downtrending or flat market. And not because it's fun to be potentially homeless in a couple of months, but because the pitfalls of a subject to sale offer can potentially be worse. So first of all, let's look at why a buyer would use a subject to sale offer. So as I previously mentioned, the biggest thing is trying to line up financing and moving dates. Additionally, a buyer may have been thinking about selling, but that dream property is already on the market and they don't have time to sell first, at least without the risk of losing out. Conversely, why would a seller consider accepting a subject to sale offer? Because if we really think about it, a subject to sale offer isn't really of benefit to a seller. Why would they want to tie up their property for an extended period of time to just one buyer? Well, if their home's been on the market for a little while and still hasn't sold, it could be useful in order to get an accepted offer. And this will cause that buyer to focus on purchasing this home rather than any others. However, I'm sure you can see that there's also a lot of risk and downside here. The length on a subject to sale offer typically ranges from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. And this can leave sellers in a less than ideal situation, especially 
especially in a falling market. Because if a buyer changes their mind, there's really no real incentive to try and sell their home. Because at the end of the day, they're gonna have the ability to back out of the offer if their home doesn't sell. So when thinking about this as a buyer, you're really gonna have to incentivize that seller. And more often than not, it's gonna be through the price. This means that you're more than likely gonna have to offer very close at or even above the asking price. However, it's not quite as simple as just having a subject to sale. You have to think about it from a seller's point of view. Even if they've got an accepted offer at a great price, they don't wanna be tied up for an extended period of time. Plus, as I already mentioned, there's no guarantee that it actually goes through. And that's where the bump clause comes in. So what exactly is a bump clause? Well, let me explain. Essentially, a bump clause allows a seller to get out of their original accepted offer if a more attractive backup offer comes in. That's right, you may be the original buyer and you had to offer at or above asking price just to get your subject to sale accepted, however, you're still not safe. If another offer comes in that the seller likes more, they can accept it and put it in a backup position. The second offer doesn't even have to be at a higher price, it just has to be accepted by the seller. And going back to the specifics of the bump clause, typically what this entails is that upon an accepted unconditional offer, meaning the buyer has removed all subjects, the bump clause is then invoked and the original buyer has between 24 to 72 hours in order to remove all subjects. Otherwise, they get bumped and buyer number two gets moved into first place. So in this situation, depending what it states on the contract, buyer number one is gonna have between 24 to 72 hours in order to remove all subjects, even if they haven't actually sold their house yet. And essentially, you're just gonna have to weigh the risks here. If you're confident that your house is gonna sell in a short period of time and you know the price you're gonna get, then you may be more inclined to remove subjects. However, if you're not confident in the sale of your home, maybe in a slower market, then you're probably not gonna to wanna to take on this risk. But at the end of the day, it's really up to you. So to make this a little more clear, let me go over an example. Buyer number one comes in and sees the property on February 1st and ends up writing an offer with the subject to sale of their own home. Within the offer, it also contains a 48 hour bump clause. The seller accepts this offer and they move into the subject removal period. Buyer number one has until March 31st to sell their home if the bump clause isn't activated. Over the next couple of weeks, the selling agent continues to market and show the property. And on March 1st, buyer number two comes into the property and falls in love with it. They write an offer on the property with all of your typical subjects and the seller accepts. This offer is then put into a backup position until buyer number two removes all subjects. At this point in time, the bump clause would be invoked on buyer number one and they would have 48 hours to make a decision. Over the next few days, buyer number two does their due diligence, removing the subject to financing, doing their home inspection, and removing all other conditions. Once they've removed all their subjects, aside from the subject that the seller has to be no longer obligated to buyer number one, the bump clause is then invoked. Buyer number one is then given 48 hours to either remove all subjects or walk away from the deal. If buyer number one removes all subjects during that 48 hour time period, they get the home. However, if they are unwilling or unable to remove subjects, then buyer number two gets bumped into first position and they get the home. And this becomes firm and official upon them submitting their deposit. One thing I will note here is that technically, depending on what the contract states, the seller can actually invoke the bump clause even without subjects being removed. But when you think about it, this isn't beneficial to the seller because even if they are to bump the original offer and accept the second one that still has subjects, it's not guaranteed to go through. So you wanna make sure that buyer number two has removed all subjects and doesn't have an out. Because at that point in time, you're guaranteed to either get one or the other. So with all that in mind, there's a couple things you're gonna to need to think about. Number one, as a buyer, how are you gonna incentivize the seller? Put yourself in their shoes. Why would they let you tie up their home for two months, unsure if your home is priced well, even on the market and if it's even gonna sell. This is why it's important to make sure your agent has an open line of communication with them. Show them that you're being proactive, that your home's on the market and that you are priced well. Basically that you're doing everything you can to get your home sold. On top of that, you're probably gonna need to incentivize them financially. And this means writing a strong offer. As I previously mentioned, you're probably gonna have to be very close, if not at or above asking price. But again, it's all gonna depend on the situation. Now, from your own point of view, this is probably gonna put pressure on you to sell your home for less, especially knowing that you're exposed to the bump clause and if you've already been sitting on the market for a couple of weeks. And as the subject to sale date approaches, this is gonna put even more pressure on you. Additionally, if you've already fallen in love with the other home, you're very emotionally invested. And this is only gonna add gas to the fire because at the end of the day, you may be faced with a couple of tough decisions. Are you gonna walk away from your purchase or are you gonna take a lower offer than you expected? It's really up to you. So what's the alternative here? Well, 
selling first. By selling first, you're gonna know exactly what your budget is as well as your timeline. And you're also gonna be able to strengthen your offer because you've already sold firm. Now, is this gonna be stress-free? No, of course not. But unless you're looking for something incredibly specific, then this is probably gonna be your best course of action. So what's the final verdict here? Well, a subject to sale offer can make sense in a lot of situations. And in a slower market, they actually occur fairly often. You just need to make sure you have a well-educated and experienced agent on your side to protect your best interests and guide you through every step of the process, regardless of if you're a buyer or a seller. And if you are the buyer, the agent who's helping you purchase is more than likely gonna be the one helping sell your home as well, or at least someone on their team. And this is gonna give you a huge benefit as they're able to coordinate both transactions rather than having two separate agents. However, if you're buying and selling in two different locations, you may be forced to use two separate agents and you're just going to have to deal with it. But that's about going to do it for my video today. So if you did get any sort of value out of it, all I ask is that you hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'd be happy to get back to you. If you did enjoy this video and you're interested in seeing more just like it, I suggest that you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you're notified whenever I put out a new video. And lastly, if you do want some personalized advice on the buying or selling process, regardless of if you're going to be using a subject to sale or not, you can scroll down and hit the first link in the description to book a call with me at your convenience. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you